Let's explore how to build this portal effect, inspired by some of our favorite movie wizardry using Unity's VFX Graph. The VFX Graph is an amazing tool for creating real-time visual effects within Unity. We can use its intuitive workflow to manage large, complex simulations. Leveraging the power of the GPU, we now have millions of particles at our disposal. To generate this portal effect, we'll use the VFX graph to transform a simple ring of particles into something more organic and dynamic. One by one, we'll incorporate noise, physics, and randomness in order to show the general workflow of creating a simulation. This demo uses the portal assets from the free visual effect graph samples. Follow the link in the description to download the project for yourself. We begin the graph with a basic shape. In this case, a torus forms the ring that emits our sparks. Then we connect that into a simple particle system. Anticipating our portal placement, we pre-configure a timeline director and some animators to match our intended blocking. The spinning circle of point lights provides interactive lighting to help integrate our effect into the scene. Our goal is to shoot sparks from the tangents along the torus ring. We can calculate those using some vector math. In this specific example, we'll take the difference of the torus position and the position of a given particle. That difference is a vector that looks like this. We'll take the cross product of the local positive z direction with that vector, and the result is our desired tangent. We normalize this, multiply it by a good starting speed value, and then use that to set the velocity. Though it's not part of the rendered effect, an output particle line can generate a rough preview of each particle's initial direction. We can use temporary nodes like this whenever setting up or troubleshooting a graph. This can approximate our intended color and brightness, or we can use a distinctive magenta color to remind ourselves not to leave the debug nodes connected. Once we're done debugging, we need more particles, lots and lots of particles. In the output, we swap to a better texture to make the particles more closely resemble sparks. Each one needs to be long and thin, so we orient the particles along their velocities. and scale them to a small value across the x-axis. We also want to stretch the particles based on how fast they're traveling, so they look like streaks. A color over life block can start each particle with a bright, high dynamic range color, and then we can have it fade and burn out over time. A multiply alpha block controls the overall opacity, and an anti-aliasing block smooths the result. And that forms the foundation of our simulation. Turning up the capacity and the spawn rate fills out our particles and then creates the effect of a glowing spinning halo. What we have, however, is a little too perfect and mechanical. Some physics can fix that. In the update particle context, a turbulence block can create the appearance of air movement. We can adjust the parameters to make it more intense or reduce them to make it more subtle. And then we want to feed in a value that's always increasing, like the total time. This prevents the turbulence from looking too static and keeps the airflow constantly in motion. Other physics blocks can add gravity, mass, or drag to simulate air resistance. If their influence is too difficult to visualize, we can temporarily dial up the lifetime and increase the number of particles. And now it resembles glowing gas, much more active and natural. But the particles don't interact with the environment. In fact, they go straight through the surrounding geometry. We can add a collide with plane block to represent the ground and then adjust the roughness to make the sparks bounce off like beads of water. 
a collide with sphere can also prevent too many sparks from entering the portal area of the ring. However, we do need to shift it and size it to keep it centered or else it can make for some unwanted interactions. We can sync some values from the torus and then the collision sphere will stay locked even when moving the game object. Reducing the lifetime returns us to this halo of sparks. However, even with the addition of forces, each spark suffers from repetition. And that's often a visual cue that tells us that something is too artificial or computer generated. Randomness can add just the right amount of entropy to make it feel a little bit more natural. And this can be as simple as setting a range of values within a block or generating random numbers as input. We can add subtle variations like this throughout the graph. Here we add randomized alpha values with a curve that makes some particles more opaque than others. Or we could add random Z rotations to the tangent angle so everything isn't spread out so uniformly. Or we can vary the lifetime. And here we separate particles into two distinct categories, shorter lived sparks that form the bright core of the ring and a few longer living embers. Combined, our particles appear more chaotic and organic with all of these little incremental variations. To make the sparks pulse on intervals, we can use a little bit of math to create a circular gradient. These nodes create the gradient, and then we can apply that to the particle's brightness and velocity. Then if we rotate the gradient, the effect almost looks like it's sputtering. More subtle than that, we can add some variation based on the world Y value. We use a simple two node setup that works as a height mask. This approximates the sparks slowing down as they burn out and turn into gas. For example, the height mask can affect particle lifetimes or it can modify the turbulence intensity. We can also apply height variations to disable gravity as particles get closer to the ground. And that extra bit of slowdown helps sell the effect to the viewer. And one final bonus, to accentuate the portal, we can inject a little juice in the form of a shader graph. This one distorts the screen space UVs and creates a noisy refractive ripple just inside the portal ring. With VFX Graph's improved integration with Shader Graph, we can now tweak related parameters all in one place in the inspector. And there you have it, a portal perfect for a sci-fi physics puzzler or a magic trick straight from the Sorcerer's Spellbook. Remember that this multi-layered approach is key to crafting details in your own particle simulations and effects. We invite you to explore the project samples yourself and be sure to follow the link in the description for the complete ebook guide to getting started with the VFX graph. These resources are full of tips and techniques to take your technical artwork to the next level. Thanks for watching.